Speaker Fury, party leaders, honourable parliamentarians, distinguished guests, mesdames et messieurs, welcome to this extraordinary event, a joint address to Parliament by His Excellency Vladimir Zelensky, President of Ukraine. I thank all those who have made it possible for us to hear from President Zelensky today, whether here in the chamber or by video link. J'invite maintenant le Premier ministre. I now ask the Prime Minister to take the floor. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Cher parlementaire. Dear parliamentarians, friends and colleagues, good morning and thank you for being here today to welcome a courageous and exceptional leader. Zelensky, on behalf of parliamentarians and on behalf of all Canadians, it is an honour to welcome you to our House. Mr. President, Volodymyr, you are a friend. Canadians and Ukrainians are friends, and they have been for a long time. But the friendship between Canada and Ukraine is not only based on this shared history. It is also based on our shared values. Volodymyr, in the years I've known you, I've always thought of you as a champion for democracy. And now democracies around the world are lucky to have you as our champion. Your courage and the courage of your people inspires us all. You're defending the right of Ukrainians to choose their own future. And in doing so, you're defending the values that form the pillars of all free democratic countries. Freedom, human rights, justice, truth, international order. These are the values you're risking your life for as you fight for Ukraine and Ukrainians. But this doesn't mean it'll be easy. Ukrainians are already paying incalculable human costs. This illegal and unnecessary war is a grave mistake, and Putin must stop it now. <laughs> Ukrainians are standing up to authoritarianism. And as parliamentarians united in this House today and all Canadians, we stand with you. As friends, you can count on our unwavering and steadfast support. And now it is my great privilege to introduce to you all the President of Ukraine, our friend, Volodymyr Zelensky. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister, dear Justin, members of the government, members of the parliament, all distinguished guests, friends, before I begin, I would like you to understand my feelings and feelings of all Ukrainians as far as it is possible. Our feelings over the last 20 days, 20 days of a full-scale aggression of Russian Federation after eight years of fightings in Donbass region. Can you only imagine? Imagine that on, the, on 4 a.m., each of you, you start hearing bomb explosions, severe explosions. Justin, can you imagine hearing you, your children, hear all these severe explosions, bombing 
of airport, bombing of Ottawa airport, tens of other cities of your wonderful country. Can you imagine that? Cruise, cruise missiles are being falling down on your terrain, and your children are asking you what happened, and you are receiving the first news which infrastructure objects have been bombed and destroyed by Russian Federation. And you know how many people already died. Can you only imagine what words, how can you explain to your children that you just, uh, full-scale aggression just happened in your country? You know that this is war to annihilate your state, your country. You know that this is the war to subjugate your people. And on second day, you receive uh, notifications that huge columns of military equipment are entering your country, crossing the border. They're entering small cities. They are giving siege. They're encircling cities. And, and they start to shell civil neighborhoods. They bomb school buildings. They destroyed kindergarten facilities, like in our city, city of Sumy, like in city of Ohtyrka. Imagine that someone is taking siege, laying siege to Vancouver. Can you just imagine them for a second? And all these people who are left in such city. And this is exactly the situation that our city of Mariupol is suffering right now. And they are left without heat or hydro, or without means of communicating, almost without food, without water, seeking shelter in bomb shelters. Dear Justin, dear guests, can you imagine that every day you receive memorandums about the number of casualties, including among women and children? You've heard about the bombings. Currently, we have 97 children that died during this war. Can you imagine famous CN Tower in Toronto? If, they, if it was hit by Russian bombs. Of course, I don't wish this on anyone, but this is our reality in which we live. We have to contemplate, we have to see where the next bombing will take place. Uh, your church is square. We have a freedom square in the city of, of in the city of Harden. Our Babin Yar, the place where uh, uh, victims of Holocaust were buried, and they, they, it has been bombed by the Russians. Imagine that Canadian facilities have been bombed, similarly as our buildings and memorial places are being bombed. A number of families have died. Every night is a horrible night. Russians are shelling from all kinds of artillery, from tanks. They're hitting civilian infrastructure. They're hitting uh, big buildings. Uh, can you imagine that there is a uh, fire starting at a nuclear power plant, and that's exactly what happened in our country. Each city that they are marching through, they are taking down Ukrainian flags. Can you imagine someone taking down your Canadian flags in Montreal and other Canadian cities? I know that you all support Ukraine. We've been friends with you, Justin, but also I would like you to understand and I would like you to feel this, what we feel every day. We want to live, and we want to be victorious. We want to prevail for the sake of life. Can you imagine when you, when you call your friends, your friendly nation, and you ask, please close the sky, close the airspace, Please stop the bombing. How many more cruise missiles have to fall on our cities until you make this happen? 
and they, in return, they express their deep concerns about the situation. When we talk to with our partners, and they say, "Please hold on, hold on, f a little longer." Some. Some people are talking about es trying to avoid the escalation. And at the same time, in response to our aspiration to become members of NATO, we also do not hear a clear answer. Sometimes we don't see obvious things. It's a, it's a dire straits, but it also allowed us to see who our real friends are over the last 20 days, and as well, eight previous years. I am sure that you've been able to see clearly what's going on, and I'm addressing all of you. Canada has always been steadfast in their support. It's, you've been a reliable partner to Ukraine and Ukrainians, and I'm sure this will continue. You've offered your help, your assistance, at the, our earliest request. You supply us with the military assistance, with humanitarian assistance. You impose severe sanctions, serious sanctions. At the same time, we see that, unfortunately, this does, it did not bring the end to the war. You, see, you can see that our cities like Kharkiv, Mariupol, and many other cities are not protected just like your cities are protected, Edmonton, Vancouver. You can see that Kyiv is being shelled and bombed, Ivano-Frank city, ivano frank It used to be, we were a very peaceful country, peaceful cities, but now they're being constantly bombarded. bombarded. Basically, what I'm trying to say that we all need to do, you all need to do more to stop Russia, to protect Ukraine, and by doing that, to protect Europe from Russian threat. They're destroying everything, memorial complexes, schools, uh, hospitals, uh, uh, housing complex. They already killed 97 Ukrainian children. We are not asking for much. We're asking for justice for real support, which will help us to prevail, to defend, to save life, to save life all of the world. Canada is leading in these efforts, and I'm hoping that other countries will follow the same suit. We're asking for more of your leadership, and please take more, uh, greater part in these efforts. Justin and all of our friends of, our, of Ukraine, all friends of the truth. Please understand how important it is for us to close our airspace from Russian missiles and Russian aircrafts. I hope you can understand. I hope you can increase your efforts. You can increase sanctions so they, don't, so they will not have a single dollar to fund their war effort. Uh, commercial entities should not be working in Russia. Probably you know better than many in any other countries that this attack on Ukraine, it's an, their attempt to annihilate Ukrainian people, and there is nothing else to it. This is their main objective. It's actually the war against Ukrainian people. And it's an attempt to destroy everything that we as Ukrainians do. It's an attempt to destroy our future, to destroy our nation, our character. You, Canadians, you know very well all this. That's why I'm asking you, please do not stop in your efforts. Please expand your efforts to bring back peace in our peaceful country. I believe, and I know that you can do it. I, we are building, we are part of the anti-war coalition and jointly I'm sure that will achieve results. I would like to also ask our Ukrainian diaspora in Canada. This is a historical moment and we need your support, your practical support. And we hope that with your practical steps you will show that you are part of the 
more than Ukrainian history. Please remember, this is a practical, modern day history of Ukraine. We want to live, we want to have peace. I am grateful to everyone of you in the Parliament of Canada who is present there, to every Canadian citizen. I am very grateful to you, Justin. I am grateful to Canadian people, and I am confident that together we will overcome and we will be victorious. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you to Canada. Thank you, Mr. President. I now invite the Honorable George Fury, Speaker of the Senate, to say a few words. President Zelensky, Prime Minister Trudeau, Chief Justice Van Heer, Speaker Rota, fellow parliamentarians, distinguished guests, Mesdames et Messieurs. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, it is a great honor and privilege for me to thank you for your very powerful and inspiring words. On behalf of all Senators, members of the House of Commons, and indeed on behalf of all Canadians, it is my honour and privilege to thank you for your very powerful and inspiring words today. Please know, Mr. President, that Canadians stand with you. We know what is at stake. You are battling for your people, for your country, and for all of us who believe in peace and democracy, in truth and justice. For all of us who stand against tyranny, lies, and the horrific war crimes that have been committed against the Ukrainian people. There is a word in the Bible, one word, that expresses so much of the courage that you, Mr. President, and your fellow Ukrainians are showing the world. In the original Hebrew, the word is hineni. Literally, it means, here I stand. It, it was said by the great Old Testament leaders when called upon to lead their people. It is a statement of stepping up to leadership in the face of overwhelming odds. It is clearly what you are saying, Mr. President, by your actions, and what all Ukrainians are saying in this terrible time of crisis. The world is witnessing a Ukraine united more than ever in common cause to secure its place among the family of nations. I know I speak on behalf of all Canadians when I express our admiration for the leadership and courage you have demonstrated as the Ukrainian people struggle to repel a brutal and illegal invasion. You have shown the world that Ukraine will not cower, will not falter, and will not be defeated. The heart and soul of Ukraine are strong. Canada stands with Ukraine and her many allies in the pursuit of a swift and peaceful resolution to this conflict. This resolve rests upon our shared commitment to democracy, to human rights, and to the sovereign equality of all nations. For Canadians, Ukraine is permanently woven into the fabric of our culture. Ukraine, simply put, is family. Mr. President, to you and the people of Ukraine, please be assured of our solidarity in the days and weeks ahead. Merci, Monsieur le Président, pour votre... Thank you, Mr. President, for your great strength and your great courage. Thank you once again for your courage and determination in the face of this horrific onslaught and for your inspiring words to Canada and indeed to the world today. Slava Ukraini. <laughs> Mr. President, most of all, 
most of us rather can only imagine the hardship, the sorrow and the fear that the people of Ukraine are enduring as their nation is attacked and their very existence is threatened. The courage and defiance that Ukrainians are demonstrating in defending their country and their way of life is an example to all freedom-loving people. And it is clear that many, our, that many of our fellow citizens are drawing strength from your own determination to repel the invaders and protect your homeland. But Ukraine is woven into the very fabric of Canadian society thanks to, to more than a million Canadians of Ukrainian descent. In an interview you gave two years ago, you said, and I quote, we must remember the heroes of today, heroes of the arts, heroes of literature, simply heroes of Ukraine. Why don't we use their names, the names of the heroes that today unite Ukraine? To the people of Ukraine, to your friends in Canada and around the world, you, Vladimir Zelensky, are one of those heroes. Heroyam Slava. On behalf of all parliamentarians, thank you for having addressed the people of Canada and for showing us the true meaning of courage, freedom and patriotism. May we prove worthy of the friendship between our people and our countries. Slava Ukraini. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Diakuyu. I now invite the Honourable Candice Bergen, Interim Leader of the Official Opposition, to address us. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to begin by first and foremost stating on behalf of my Conservative Caucus our complete admiration and respect for the people and the nation of Ukraine. And to President Zelensky, let me express to you how much I admire your courage and your sacrificial leadership at this critical time in Ukraine's history. The kind of leadership that you are showing, sir, is very rare, and it serves as an inspiration to all of us who are elected. You are the leader of Ukraine for such a time as this, and we remain indebted to you. Monsieur le Président Zelensky. President Zelensky, thank you for your leadership in this war against your country and your defense of democracy. The official opposition stands with Ukraine. It is our duty. We will also be there after this conflict in order to help you rebuild Ukraine. Your courage inspires us. The images that we are seeing from Ukraine, as you described them, President, are heartbreaking and painful. Families huddled in bomb shelters, the ruins of a children's hospital and a maternity ward the elderly, elderly who are trying to find their way to safety. But there is also inspiration as we watch ordinary people, men and women of all ages, defending their homeland. We are witnesses to the strength and the defiance of Ukrainians standing up for their freedom, their independence and their sovereignty. Ukrainians aren't just fighting to defend themselves. Let's be very clear. They are defending all of Europe because Putin's brutal attack on Ukraine is an attack on all of us. That's the lesson history has taught us and one we cannot ignore. And, and it is why we must help the people of Ukraine in every way possible. Canada has the largest number of people of Ukraine descent outside of Ukraine and Russia. For a century, they have enriched our communities and our culture, our, our culture, especially in the Canadian prairies, which is where I am from. Canada, and Manitoba in particular, share ties with Ukraine that cannot be broken. And now, almost 1.4 million Ukrainian Canadians are watching what is happening. Their hearts and their souls are reaching out hoping, praying for the nation and the people of their forebears. This war of naked aggression has revealed Vladimir Putin for what he really is, a warmonger 
and a violent predator with no regard for human life and suffering. He has crossed lines that after two world wars we thought would never be crossed, and he's shaken the rule-based order that has kept millions safe since 1945. Every day he tells the world lies, and then he proceeds to kill innocent and vulnerable Ukrainians, including women and children. And while on his rampage, he continues to threaten the world, saying if he doesn't get his way, he will use the worst extremes possible. It's sickening to watch. Putin must be brought to justice. He must be held to account for his crimes against humanity at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. just a war against Ukraine, it is a war against the free democratic world. We must stand with Ukraine. It is not a choice, it is a moral duty. Canada was the first country to recognize Ukraine's independence from the Soviet Union. Now it's time to honour that legacy. We must do more, together with our allies, to secure Ukraine's airspace. We need to protect protect at a minimum the airspace over the humanitarian corridors so that Ukrainians can seek safe passage away from the war zones and to allow humanitarian relief to reach those areas under siege. Canada must do whatever it can to cut through any red tape and welcome Ukrainians who are fleeing, although we all know that what Ukrainians want most is to be able to live in their home nation free, sovereign and peaceful. President Zelensky. reassure you that Canada will be a safe haven for Ukraine citizens who choose to come here until the battle is over. While they are in Canada, we will cherish them, care for them, provide for them purpose and hope, and when it is time, they will return to their beloved Ukraine and their families. This is our pledge to you. Let me conclude by saying simply, Canadians support you today as you face Putin and his reckless empire building. Conservatives stand shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine and we will continue to support you when this terrible conflict finally ends and you rebuild your homes and communities. Your courage and faith and your fortitude in the face of adversity are an inspiration to all of us. Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Keep fighting, keep believing, Keep hoping. Thank you.